In 1883, Canada was just 16 years old. Sir John A. Macdonald was our Canadian Prime Minister. England had the first electric railway. And Victoria was the Queen of England. And into this world, Hudson was born to James and Amelia. Welcome back to Church History. I'm your host, Laura Lee Siemens. I think that we have resolved our issues with our host site, so hopefully you've gotten all of the back issues from our podcast that you may have missed in January. If you haven't, please message me and let me know so I can see if I have anything else that I need to fix. All right, today we're talking about one of my favorite people, Hudson Taylor. His father, James, was a chemist and a lay pastor before Hudson was even born. His parents prayed that he would grow up to be a missionary in China. As a child, Hudson and his sister would sit at the table and their parents would study the Bible. And right from the very beginning, Hudson's parents wanted him to know about God. Hudson's parents told him often the story of how their family found Jesus Christ. Hudson's great-grandfather had been struggling on his wedding day. He felt the pressure of the day and life moving forward, and it was just too much to bear. In desperation, he began to pray and call out to God. He turned his heart to Jesus and made a vow. From that moment on, his prayer would be that he and his household would serve the Lord. Great-grandfather was late for his own wedding. In fact, his wife thought he wasn't even going to show up. But he did show up with a glow on his face she wasn't quite sure she understood. After the marriage, his wife was really angry that her new husband was suddenly so religious. But great-grandfather prayed and prayed. And then one day, she also gave her heart to God. And together they vowed their family for generations would follow Jesus and serve him. Their son became a preacher and his children also went into ministry. And then now they prayed that Hudson and his sister would also go into ministry. Hudson's father also read a lot of books about China to his children. And Hudson declared that when he grew up, he was going to live in China. As a child, Hudson was sick often. In fact, he would be sick throughout most of his life. He was so sick he couldn't go to school with other kids. So he had to stay home and be homeschooled because he wasn't able to run around and play with the other kids. During this time, he learned to love reading. What he hated was nighttime because it was too dark to read. So one night, Hudson had an idea. When his mom wasn't looking, he took a handful of candles and put them into his pocket. It was a perfect plan. That night, when it was too dark to read, he would light a candle. It was a great plan. But he ran into a problem. That night, a man came to visit them, and the man was sitting next to the fire. The man took Hudson, and Hudson had to sit on his lap next to the fire. Hudson could feel the candles heating up and melting in his pocket. By the time he finally got away and ran up the stairs, the candles had melted and ruined his pants, and his legs were hot with wax. When Hudson was 13, he stopped school and began to work. His first job was at a bank. While working at the bank, he talked about God, and the other staff mocked him. They told him God was old-fashioned. Hudson began to talk with his family about the issues he was having at work. He began to question the Bible and even the existence of God. He quickly turned his back on God. His mother prayed every night for him. His father became so distraught and angry that his relationship with Hudson was broken. He had no hope that his son would ever come to Christ. Eventually, Hudson left his job at the bank and started to work with his father. He worked at a pharmacy mixing medicine. Hudson only cared about making a lot of money, becoming rich and powerful. His family would sit at the table and talk about the Bible, but Hudson stopped paying attention. He wasn't interested in the Bible at all. He wasn't interested in God or church. God was boring. The Bible was boring. Plus, he already knew everything that was in it and he wasn't even sure if he really believed it. Throughout Hudson's teen years, his heart grew colder and harder. Hudson's mom began praying earnestly for her son, and one day, while she was away, she stopped what she was doing and started praying, and she would not stop praying until she felt God tell her to stop. She prayed and prayed. Hudson was 16 years old, and he wasn't at work. He was so bored, and he went into his father's office to look for something to read. He had read every single book in the study, then he accidentally tipped over a basket and knocked out some tracks. He thought, these usually start with stories to get people's attention, and then the preaching starts. 
I'll read the stories and then throw it away before he gets to the boring Bible part. Hudson took the paper into the barn, got comfortable, and started to read. Then he read the words, The Finished Work of Christ. Suddenly he remembered the words of Jesus on the cross. It is finished. He could see Jesus on the cross, dying for him. Jesus had done everything. He had done all that was needed to be done. Jesus had finished it. All he asked from Hudson was to receive it. Hudson fell on his face before God, right there in the barn. He cried out to God and received him. At that moment, Hudson's mother felt a wave of happiness flow over her, and she knew Hudson had just become a Christian. She laughed as she headed home. When she got home, Hudson opened the door, excited to tell her. But she already knew. Her prayers had been answered. Hudson changed that day. He was happy. And he had a drive to tell everybody about Jesus. On Sundays, after church, he would go door to door and visit every home that was not in church and tell them about Jesus. This was often met with cursing and hitting. People didn't like his boldness. One day, Hudson was praying and he told God he would do anything God asked him to do. And he heard God say, Go to China. A few days later, Hudson was visiting a pastor at his house. He saw a book about China. Hudson asked if he could borrow the book, and the pastor asked, Why? Why would you want a book about China? I'm going to China to serve God. The pastor kind of laughed it off. So how are you going to do that? Where in the world are you going to get money to go all the way to China? And what would you even do when you got there? Hudson didn't have any of the answers to his questions. He was still a teenager. But he got a job with a Christian doctor. He began to learn everything he could. He also began to learn to read Chinese. One night he was laying in bed and he thought, In China, I'm not going to have this nice bed. So he got up and slept on the floor. He did everything he could to prepare for the harsh life he would face in China. Then one day, Hudson met a beautiful music teacher. He fell in love right away, and she liked him as well. He talked to her all the time about his plans to move to China. She would ask him questions like, Well, what kind of servants would you have in China? And would you have a nice house in China? Hudson was concerned that she didn't really understand what missions was. Still, he loved her, so he asked her to marry him. The girl's father told Hudson, I will let you marry my daughter. You're studying to be a doctor, and that's good. But you have to promise me you will not move to China. The young lady agreed she would marry Hudson, but China was a no. So Hudson had to end his relationship with a young lady. He found this the hardest thing God asked him to give up. He loved her, and he didn't want to leave for China alone. For years, he continued to pray for this young lady, and he continued to write to her, hoping that God would change her heart. Things continued to get worse for Hudson. He continued witnessing on the streets, but men would take his papers away and rip them up and then knock him to the ground. On top of that, the doctor he was working for was always forgetting to pay him. One day, a man came to ask Hudson to come and help his wife. Hudson entered their small apartment, and it was clear the family had nothing. The man, his wife, and his children were starving to death. He could tell just by looking at them. Hudson gave the woman some medicine and prayed for her to recover. The whole time Hudson was in the apartment, all he could think about was the money that was in his pocket. It was all that Hudson had left. Actually, he had been on his way to go and buy food when the man had stopped him. He couldn't give it away. It was literally everything he had. As Hudson prayed for the lady, he knew he had to do more. He reached into his pocket and gave the father all the money he had. The man's face lit up. He would now be able to feed his family. That night, Hudson went home to a house with no food and no way to buy any food. As he arrived home, there was a package waiting for him. Inside was a pair of new gloves. As he put the gloves on, inside he found one of the gloves had money. In fact, it had four times the amount he had just given away. Many times the doctor forgot to pay Hudson, and every time Hudson prayed, God provided, and during this time, Hudson kept learning the Bible and studying Chinese. One day, Hudson was working with a patient who was dying, and Hudson caught the disease. He became very sick, and the doctor told Hudson, I don't think you're going to make it. You're going to die. Hudson told the doctor to relax. He wasn't going to die. God called him to China, and God had plans for him in China. A few weeks later, Hudson was completely better. These were the teen years of Hudson Taylor. 
He'd become a Christian at the age of 16, and he spent the last years of his teens serving God with all his heart. God used those years of him being a teenager, serving and loving God, to prepare him for the next adventure. But the years of his teens were filled with adventures as well. You see, when we tell God we are willing to be used by him, he uses us. It doesn't matter how old you are or what talents you have. What matters is our willingness to give God everything. Do you love learning about church history and love this podcast? This podcast is being turned into a book series, and the first book is now available for sale. You can find the link in the show notes. And now, back to our episode. At the age of 21, Hudson felt ready to leave for China. It would take five months by boat to arrive in China, and he would not see or hear from his family for many years. You know, I wonder what Hudson would think about our lives today. Today, I looked up the cost for a plane ticket to China. I could get a plane trip between $800 and $1,000. And it would really just take hours to fly to China. And we have social media and even FaceTime and Zoom to keep in touch with our families. I wonder if Hudson would be surprised at how easy it would be today to be a missionary, and yet how few missionaries there are. The five-month trip was not easy for Hudson Taylor. There was a storm that almost ripped the boat in half. And there was another time when there was no wind at all. And without wind, there's no way to steer the boat. Suddenly there was large rocks ahead, and there was nothing they could do to stop the boat from crashing into the rocks, because there was no wind to steer the boat. Hudson told all their men to go into their room and pray. Then Hudson told the captain to raise the sail. The captain thought he was crazy. Why would he raise the sail? There's no wind. But he finally agreed. And as the sail went up, a gust of wind came and the boat turned just in time to avoid the rocks. Finally, after five long months, Hudson arrived in China. They landed and found themselves in the middle of a civil war. Chinese history is marked with rebellions. There was a man named Xiao Chan, and he believed that a higher being had called him to conquer China, overpower the rulers, and create the heavenly kingdom of great harmony. The followers of Xiao Chan were the poorest of China. The people who were hopeless found a possible path to hope by revolting against the government. The movement was winning, and by the time Hudson Taylor landed in China, the group had taken control of one-third of the country. The group believed in a mix of Confucianism and Western tradition, a mix of the old core values and the new freedoms being fought for in the West. Remember, slavery had been outlawed in Europe for about 20 years by this point. America was 10 years away from the start of the Civil War. That would bring an end to slavery in America. There was a movement of hope for a brighter, freer future. The poor of China wanted their piece of freedom. At the same time, they wanted the traditions of China to be kept pure. This was a picture of freedom and peace that drew people to the movement. The people were demanding land reform, women's right, and to rid the country of opium, tobacco, and alcohol, which had been brought by the British. They wanted better education and a new political movement. This is what the China looked like when Hudson arrived. Hudson found a place to live among other missionaries on the coastal areas. They were not allowed to live inland. He began to learn how to speak Chinese. It wasn't just the Civil War that was a problem. Hudson didn't get along well with the other missionaries. To his shock, he found that the missionary work was aimed at other British people in China. They were in China, but they weren't reaching anyone who was actually Chinese. They were simply reaching other British people in China. A lot of businessmen lived in the coastal areas, and the coastal areas were actually becoming very similar to England. It was actually really sad for Hudson to see. It was like the Chinese culture was being taken away and China was being turned into England. It seemed like the missionaries were doing more work to colonize China than to preach Jesus Christ. The church was growing, but with Englishmen and women, Hudson wanted to leave the coastal areas and go into the inner parts of China, the areas where they were poor. But the other missionaries discouraged it, and it was actually illegal for British people to enter that part. The house where Hudson lived was in the middle of the area where the rebels were attacking, and one day he was almost hit by a cannonball. Hudson finally left the house where he was living and bought a boat to live on. The day after he moved out of the house, it was hit by cannons and burned to the ground. Hudson felt that he had learned enough Chinese to speak to the people. He enjoyed the houseboat and began to travel down rivers from city to city, preaching the name of Jesus. But people did not respond. Hudson handed out Bibles to people, but no one was listening to him. 
and he felt so lonely. Then another civil war started. Islamic groups were growing in power, and the rebellion ended with the emperor ordering the massacre of everyone who followed Islam. He was a young emperor, and he wanted to show his power. At the same time, the war known as the Opium War was in full swing. Both Russia and Britain was trying to take land from China, and they were bringing opium into the country. Because of this, people didn't trust foreigners or religions they didn't understand. They wanted change, but they wanted to change the country themselves, without others' involvement. So no one wanted to hear what the English gentleman named Hudson Taylor wanted to tell them about a new religion. One day Hudson and his friends were preaching, and a crowd grew. They began to beat Hudson and his friend. They pulled them until Hudson thought he was going to be pulled right in half. The crowd knocked him to the ground and then dragged him to the Mandarin. Both men thought they were going to die. The Mandarin asked what they were teaching. This was a big deal. With all the rebellions in the country, Hudson knew if he said the wrong thing, then the Mandarin might think he was pushing a rebellion. Hudson stood slowly and caught his breath. He had to lean against the wall for support. And then he preached. Mandra did not sentence them to death, but instead told them they could go ahead and preach and then offered his soldiers for protection. One day Hudson had a thought. What if he was in Great Britain and a man dressed like these Chinese men had come to him with a strange book? Would he have taken them seriously? Hudson realized he had to blend in. He said, we have to be as Chinese as we can be without sinning. He adapted every part of the culture that did not go against God's word. He never took part in any culture that would go against biblical principles. He dyed his hair black, he grew it out, and then shaved the top of his head. He wore the clothes and ate the food and lived in the same houses as the Chinese. Hudson ended up moving into the village where the Mandarin had allowed him to preach. He set up a doctor's office in a clinic and he worked all day, helping around 200 patients a day, and then at night he would preach. The missionary society Hudson was working with, the Chinese Evangelization Society, did not approve of Hudson's way of preaching. So instead of fighting with them more, he left the society. When he wasn't fighting with the missionary society, he was fighting with the Chinese doctors in town. They weren't happy with him taking their business, especially since he didn't charge money. The doctors went to the Mandarin and convinced the Mandarin to kick Hudson out of town, and Hudson sadly was forced to leave. During this time, he wished so much he had a wife with him. He was still thinking about the music teacher back home. He prayed that God would change her heart, open her heart to the mission field. He prayed every day and continued to write to him. But her letters were only asking things like how many servants he had or what his house looked like. And he realized her heart was not going to change. On top of a broken heart, Hudson had to move to another town. He set up a doctor's office and also a school for boys. Down the road, there was a school for girls. And there was a teacher named Maria running the school. One day, Maria and her sister came to visit Hudson. Hudson wanted to serve Maria a nice meal, but he had no food and no money. He really wanted to impress Maria, but what could he do? He prayed, and then he asked God for help. As he was praying, a boy came up with a letter that had been mailed two days earlier, and in the letter was money. Hudson ran to the store and bought food, and he was able to make a nice meal for Maria. But Hudson realized he had to be honest with Maria. He was actually very poor, and he trusted God for everything. He told Maria that. She said her father had died many years ago, and God had taken care of her all these years. She knew that wasn't going to change. The established missionaries tried to convince Maria not to marry Hudson. They told her he was unconventional, didn't follow the advice of other missionaries, and was sick a lot. They told her he would not last another year in China, and that he would never have an impact on the country. Maria listened to their advice, and she also prayed. She knew that God was actually giving her the okay to marry Hudson. However, she waited until the older missionaries finally gave her their blessing. Maria and Hudson were married January 20th, 1858. The days were very full for the couple. They were running two schools, a doctor clinic, and every single night Hudson was preaching. Imagine you're in China, sitting on a stool in a crowded room. Everyone's eyes are fixed on the man in the front. He's a white man, although at first glance you thought he was Chinese. He's dressed and speaking like a Chinese man. He's laying out the gospel, and the people are captivated. Then a door opened, and in walks a man. 
The mood of the crowd changes instantly. People begin to shift uncomfortably in their chairs, and you can feel fear in the air. The man finds a seat and sits. The preacher continues with his message. When the sermon ends, he asks if anyone wants to give their heart to Jesus. The man stands and walks to the front of the room. Everyone is sure he's going to attack the preacher, but instead he kneels. The man who came to hear Hudson preach was Mr. Nee. He was the leader at the temple. Any time he heard of someone in the village not worshipping idols, he would attack them. He was violent, mean, and very protective of his temple. When he gave his heart to Jesus, the town was in complete shock, and it was a turning point in Hudson's ministry. One day, Mr. Nee came to Hudson. He told Hudson his entire life had changed since receiving Jesus. He was calm now and didn't have the anger issues anymore, and he was happy. He asked Hudson, How long have your people known about Jesus, that he could take away your sin burden and make you free? Hudson said that in England they had heard the gospel hundreds of years ago. We talked about the gospel coming to England in our episode, Greg the Great. When Mr. Nee heard this, he became angry. Your people had this great knowledge for hundreds of years, and just now you're coming to tell us? My father died without knowing that he could have his sins forgiven. Why would your people wait so long to come and tell us? Hudson had no answer to give him. August 22, 1868. There was an incident that changed Hudson's ministry. The Yangshao Riot. There was a group of Chinese people who were angry with the missionaries. They wanted them to leave. They attacked missionaries' homes. And Hudson's home was no different. His home, clinic, and school were raided by one of the groups that were part of the rebellion. Marie was pregnant at the time. And when they attacked the home, she was forced to jump out of a two-story window to escape. She survived, and so did the baby, but it was very scary. Everything was stolen. They lost everything. The Chinese government was afraid the British would be angry about the situation, so they sent money to the Hudsons. The newspapers covered the story. The media wrote that the Hudsons had demanded payment from the Chinese. This made the people they were working with angry. The media also made it sound like the rebels were angry specifically with Hudson and his ministry, and that the people of China wanted him to leave. The paper also made it sound like the rebellions were caused by the missionaries, and people began to take sides. Even though Hudson didn't see himself as British anymore, and he felt no ties or loyalty to Britain, he felt that China was his home and his people. He was still turned on. The story spread to the churches in Great Britain. They believed the stories that he was the one causing the rebellion in China, and that these rebellions were causing problems for the British merchants in China. The churches all pulled their support from Hudson. He had no food for himself, his family, or his students. His clinic had no supplies or medicine, and he had no money to buy more. November 17, 1868, the Anti-Christian Manifesto was issued. Those who were part of the riots wanted the missionaries out of China. One day, Hudson was called down to the kitchen. The staff showed him empty shelves, empty bins. There was nothing, not even one grain of rice. The hospital had patients that needed to be fed. The school had students that needed to be fed. And there was no money and no food. Hudson prayed. And while he was praying, a letter arrived from a man named George Mueller. George Mueller was a man in Great Britain who had an orphanage. Many times there was no food or money for the orphans. But every night, Mueller would pray for hours. And God always provided. Over the last few nights, he'd heard God tell him to send money to Hudson, not just once, but every week. It was enough money to keep the hospital and the school open. The churches were supporting George Mueller, and George Mueller was supporting Hudson Taylor. In our next episode, we're going to be talking about George Mueller. Finally, there was food to eat and supplies for the hospital. Are you enjoying this podcast? Do you want to support this podcast? Well, pour yourself a cup of coffee and imagine waking up each morning with a reminder from our church fathers. Check out our Etsy page where you can find mugs with quotes from great men and women of God. You'll find a link in the show notes. And now, back to our episode. Things were very hard for Hudson and his wife. Twice he lost a child during childbirth and three other children died before they turned 10 years old. The grief and stress of the years took its toll on Hudson and Maria. They started to become sick as well. Hudson saw that his family was suffering, and he decided he needed to take his family and go back to Great Britain. 
Hudson, Maria, and the children got in a boat and took a five-month-long trip back to Great Britain. The doctors told Hudson he would never be able to return to China. He was simply too sick. Hudson was devastated. He felt like everything was falling apart. But while he was in Britain, he took time to go back to school, and he finished his medical education. While Hudson was recovering in Great Britain, he spoke in many churches. He would pray for them over a map of China. He knew he could not reach all of China by himself. He began to pray that God would send 70 missionaries. And soon, 78 missionaries were signed up. So, Hudson prayed for 100 missionaries, and then 200 signed up. So Hudson prayed for 1,000 missionaries, and 1,153 signed up. Eventually, Hudson was able to return to China and continue his work. He had more help and more money. One of the things Hudson did allow was women to head up missionary stations. People were outraged at this and tried to force him to change this. But Hudson refused to back down, and his idea worked out well. You see, the Chinese people didn't feel comfortable with strange men in their homes, but women were always welcome. So the women missionaries were able to go into the homes of the people and speak to the families. Many people were coming to Christ. But then Maria got sick suddenly, and she passed away. Hudson was heartbroken. He was so sure he would not be able to continue his ministry. Now Hudson was alone with children to raise, schools to run, and hospitals to run. He could not handle the idea of life without his wife. He decided he needed to go back to Britain for a time. During the long months of the boat ride back to Britain, he met a lady named Jenny. They became friends during the trip, and once in Britain, they continued to spend time together. And then they got married. Hudson continued preaching throughout Britain. He also traveled to America to preach. One day, he was preaching in D.L. Moody's church. After his sermon, D.L. Moody called for an offering. Hudson stood up and stopped the offering. I never ask for money. If God wants someone to give to the ministry, God will ask them, and then they will follow on their own account. D.L. Moody thought Hudson was crazy. But the next day, a man came to see Hudson and gave him $5,000. He told him the night before, at church, he had taken $5 out of his pocket to give to him. But once he got home, he knew God was asking him to give $5,000. Soon, Hudson was able to return to China with his new wife. One day, Hudson was traveling with a man named Peter. Hudson heard a splash, and he ran to see Peter had fallen into the water. Hudson jumped in to save him, but he couldn't find him. There was fishing boats nearby, so Hudson yelled for the fishermen to please come and help him. They yelled back, but they were too busy. Hudson was yelling, please, I need you. The men yelled back, how much money will you give me? Hudson said, I only have a few dollars. That's not enough. It's not worth it. Hudson kept yelling for help. Finally, the fishermen threw their nets into the water and found Peter's dead body. It was too late. Hudson found this very hard to deal with. And as he buried Peter's body, he thought of the churches he'd spoken in. Please come to China and help me reach the Chinese. We're too busy. We have jobs to do. Uh, how much money would you give us? That little, that's not enough. This broke Hudson's heart. Around this time, Jenny was diagnosed with cancer. She passed away, leaving Hudson alone again. Life was full of burdens for Hudson. And just when things couldn't get any worse, another civil war started. This time, a group called the Boxers began to attack and kill missionaries, as well as any Christian Chinese people. In a short period of time, they killed 135 missionaries and thousands of Chinese Christians. When the Civil War finally ended, the government offered money to the families, but they refused the money. They said they would offer forgiveness. The people were so surprised by the response of the Christians that more began to come and hear the preaching. The missions also opened special homes for people addicted to opium. They offered free help. They knew the British were the ones who had brought the opium to the people, and they wanted to help them. At the age of 73, in 1905, Hudson asked his son to take him to a special town. It was the most hostile area in all of China. He had heard God tell him he would not die until that town had received the good news of Jesus. Hudson arrived. He preached, and he met other missionaries, and he heard the stories of people who had received Jesus, and he spoke to all of those who had become Christians. That night, after he preached, he went to bed, 
and went home to be with Jesus. After 51 years in China, Hudson died at the age of 73. He was famous for saying, God's work, done God's way, will never lack God's supply. Hudson started 125 schools. He personally led over 25,000 Chinese people to the Lord. He started a missionary organization called China Inland Missions. And when he died, it was the largest mission organization in the world. And he did all that in 51 years. So what are your plans for the next 51 years? In 1949, the communist government in China ordered the execution of every missionary. They were rounded up and beheaded. We're going to be covering that story and some specific missionaries who were beheaded during that time period in the future. Men, women, and children were killed. The few that could escaped and fled China. The communist government and also the Western world thought this would be the end of the church in China. But the Chinese continued the church as an underground movement. And today, around 90 million Christians are in China. And it is estimated that in a few years, there will be more Christians in China than any other country in the world. In 1980, Hudson's great-grandson stood at a museum in China with his family. He stood next to the monument of his great-grandfather. And he prayed that God would raise up a man like my great-grandfather. God answered that prayer, and his son, also named Hudson Taylor, felt God calling him to China. Today, Hudson Taylor, the great-great-grandson of Hudson Taylor, is a missionary in China. The vow that Hudson's great-grandfather made on his wedding day still continues today. Hudson Taylor said God has three stages, impossible, difficult, done. What is God calling you to do today that seems impossible? Don't worry. Impossible is just stage one. God, today, let someone listening to this podcast feel your calling. Send your Holy Spirit to open our hearts. Call a generation to rise up and take your good news wherever you've called them to go. Give them courage to follow you. I'm Laura Lee Siemens. For more podcasts, blogs, or videos, check out my website at lauraleesiemens.com.